Hello. Today's episode number 67 of the Professor Slots podcast is an audio recording of my second live Q&A session on YouTube and Facebook. Plus, in this episode, I'll be covering the current state of slot machine casino gambling in the great U.S. state of Arkansas. Thank you for joining me for the Professor Slots podcast show. I'm John Friedel, and this is the podcast about slot machine casino gambling. It is where I provide knowledge, insights, and tools for helping you improve your slot machine gambling performance. In case you missed it, on my last episode, I went over 11 practical slots money management tips to keep your winnings. Further, I reviewed Arizona slot machine casino gambling in 2019. I hope you enjoyed listening to my last episode as much as I enjoyed making it for you. Remember, my weekly Q&A session will be on Saturdays beginning at 2 p.m. Eastern Time until about 3 p.m. Bring whatever slots questions you have and I'll do my best to answer them. An easy-to-remember link to my live YouTube show is professorslots.com slash live. Feel free to stop by any time during my hour-long Q&A. Remember to visit professorslots.com slash subscribe to get my free report revealing the top seven online resources for improving your gambling performance, including the one I've used as a top-tier slot machine casino gambler. Unfortunately, a transcript of this Q&A session is not available. Here it is. And now we have sound. Awesome. <laughs> there I was talking. Um, uh, I love this technology stuff. Um, yeah, I could hear myself before, but there's tricks and tips to um, sorting this out. So I don't need that anymore. Um, right. Going back to the questions and my, I'll be a little more briefer in my answer now. Um, right. Okay. Chuck. Do I consider myself an advantage player? Yes, I am. Uh, I consider myself a modern and slots-related advantage player. I don't do a lot of the things that uh, slots advantagers, well, really advantage players did before 2012. I'm very focused on the casino business practices and taking advantage of them. Um, I know advantage players are everywhere, right? Um, blackjack card counting, all the, all these different areas, looking at the rules of a game. Um, I recently had a post about this, um, about the different things that advantage players might do. Um, I'm one type. Uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, Bill, uh, you can't go, I can't win at slots unless I am playing a machine that is set up and hopefully pay. Absolutely. Uh, Everything that I do, my advantage plays are to find those machines, to find the patterns, to figure out what the casino might uh, be doing, uh, what the slot manufacturers might be doing, uh, something to look for. Um, I'm, I'm glad you can hear me, Bill. Uh, I'm going to try to get past uh, that technical mistake. Um, right. Uh, and let's see. Uh so hopefully people have been to my website. I have, um, let me see if I can do this. Uh, maybe show. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Let's see. Should be able to. Full screen view. Don't really have too many options here. Um, all right. Well. One of the things I'd like to do is be able to show you, say, my web page. Um, but as you can see, I'm, uh, I'm new to this live stuff. And um, all right, I'm new to this live stuff and, and uh, getting an active screen. Um, uh, basically, video from my monitor is apparently a little bit beyond me. I, I um, want to keep up with the questions. Uh, maybe I can try to... Uh, oh, do I have something? I might have something. Uh, desktop presenter. Yeah. Uh, remote desktop. Uh, change template. Full screen view. Oh. How about that? Hmm. 
dun, 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 dun. Uh, while we wait for a few people to join, I'm going to see if I can't possibly um, uh, make this happen. Uh, desktop presenter. And, well, by golly, I still can't do it. Uh, test. Yep, still got sound. Um, right. And desktop presenter. Change source. I'm just going to give up on this. Uh, I'll run some other tests um, at another time. So let's go back to chat. Um, <laughs> lasting build. Uh, it's good to see you here. Uh, how is the uh, uh, lasting build is a YouTube channel, uh, a gentleman that I met. Uh, in an eight, nine week class on how to do some of this stuff. So it's good to see you here. Um, uh, if you're interested in, um, I, I, I'm not quite sure if I'm going to get this right, uh, for lasting build, but if you're interested in home woodworking and building a, and being part of a community for, community for a, a small shop in your home, uh, lasting build YouTube channel is a great place to go. Um, also he's working on, a, uh, well, Maybe I shouldn't say something called lasting heat having to do with salsas. And we're all very excited. So, uh, right. And <clears throat> so what I wanted to talk about today, uh, which might have been the part where I was muted, uh, is what are your 2020 gambling goals? Um, uh, one of my audience members reach out, reached out to me and they said they want to have their first time ever, um, uh, taxable jackpot, that is to say $1,200 or more. Uh, and uh, I believe he got that in North Carolina about a week ago. So I'm not sure if that's still, that's still a 2020 goal. It's been such a, you know, a, a goal for such a long time um, that you wonder uh, how that's going to work. Uh, you know, what's the next goal? Maybe, maybe make it a regular thing. Um, but uh, what are your, uh, 2020 gambling goals. Uh, I think there's a way for me to um, look at more than just the ch I have top chat and I have all chat. So let's see. Uh, all chat. All right. Um, so one of the things uh, that I was also also being asked about by uh, an individual today several times um, and in the last couple of weeks, I think it's going to be like a regular thing um, is, uh, let's see, where are we at? Tools. Hmm. Um, and screens. Yeah. This live stuff, I'm trying to figure out how to do it um, uh, uh, in a way that um, would allow me to to be uh, have a live screen and a, and a few other things. But I think practice is going to make perfect. Um, but in the last little bit, uh, just to keep going, the last little bit, I've been getting uh, questions from individuals who who I know we're all a little paranoid as gamblers, uh, but. Uh, they were wondering if there's sensors in the in the in the chairs to determine if somebody's frustrated or aggravated or um, excited, and I was like, um, I'm not sure uh, everybody who plays slots is. <laughs> so um, why would the casino want to know you're not? bored. Um, I, I didn't understand the question. Uh, it's it's really getting past. Um, uh, what, what I think really matters, um, about business stuff. Um, one of the questions that might be a little more focused on what's possible would be this, uh, rem this remotely, this, this central server that, uh, controls slot machines in many of the modern casinos. Um, it doesn't have to have been built since 2012, although if it was built since 2012, it most likely has it. Um, but you can't just put it into a casino without a serious amount of renovation. That's a lot of cables, and they're not using Wi-Fi. They're using hardware. Um, and that means tearing up the floors. And if you see new carpeting, that's that's not when it happened. So um, 
Uh, right. So, so if you are at a casino, uh, that has been significantly renovated and a lot of them are, I was talking to an individual from Oklahoma who's talking about, you know, all that renovation. They didn't understand why. And I tried to explain that the central computer allows, um, a financial advantage to the casino that doesn't have much to do. It doesn't have anything to do with controlling your chances of winning. Um, I mean, you individually, uh, they can change the uh, odds on slot machines with remotely um, when it's not being used. Those them's the rules. Uh, and uh, sometimes on a busy night, it, it can't be uh, changed because someone's using it. So you have to be between users and it does take a few minutes. So People are just not on the next slot machine, every empty chair. So it, you, they usually set this stuff up before that session starts, uh, before things get busy at the casino. And then they, they sort of have to live with the results, after, you know, up till, what, 11 at night, midnight at night, uh, when seats start getting empty. But it's a bit too late then. So the central computer allows them to adjust the odds on slot machines within limits, uh, within uh, time at times when the machines are not fully in use. Uh daily, multiple times per day. And this allows them to meet their daily financial performance metrics, something they wanted for a very long time, because in the past they had an army of slot mechanics who would go out and, uh, you know, change the odds, open the door, change the odds, close the door, reset, you know, according to their, their plan um, uh, on every slot machine. And it would take, I don't know, 30, 40 slot mechanics to get through all of them in about two weeks. Well, they were able to reduce their employees um, to just those who change the filters and do regular maintenance um, on slot machines. And, and that's a huge savings. And being able to hit their daily financial performance metrics. You know, in many cases, it's legally required, um, at least on a monthly basis, sometimes on a weekly basis, like in Nevada, to hit the gaming requirements, um, uh, pay out theoretical payout limits. And then, uh, you know, this is a great step forward. And therein is how we have an advantage play. So uh, Chuck did ask me if I uh, was an advantage player. Um, you know, I, I will say that I'm an advantage player, but but. I have advantage plays. I figured out a few. I think this is true, of, if you think about it, true of any advantage player. They figured out a few. And I recently wrote an article about advantage players always having to come up with a new thing, always having to come up with the next advantage play. Well, I have a few and I have to work at them. I have worked at them and that allows me. And, and so I don't know what your advantage plays are, Chuck. Um, I know what mine are and I'm willing to tell you. Uh, and I've written it down to the best of my knowledge on my website at professorslots.com uh, and then made podcast episodes of them and soon YouTube videos. Uh, a lot of them are also in my book, um, Learning to Win, which a copy is around here somewhere. Um, uh, Learning to Win, it's available on Amazon as an ebook as well as a soft cover, 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 uh, soft cover, uh, and <laughs> um, I'm not really great at monetization. It's something I'm trying to do uh, more of, but I will say my book makes an excellent Christmas gift. Um, I, uh, it's fairly cheap. Uh, and last year, Christmas, December was awesome. In fact, the last day you could order something from Amazon and receive it before Christmas, uh, was the maximum number of books that uh, anyone uh, copies of my book that anyone had ever bought in one day um, in December last year was amazing. Um, I hope that uh, something similar because um, it, it's a minuscule amount of money. Um, <laughs> seriously, uh, uh, Amazon takes 70 percent. That's seven zero. That's seven, seven zero. So I get 30 percent and then I pay taxes on that. Um, so on that income. So uh, it really the point of having an ebook is for those people who read, I want to give them something to read on slots. For those people who listen, I want to give them podcast episodes. For those who want to um, uh, uh, watch 
That's why I'm working on the YouTube channel. And of course, they can also read everything on my website as well, although it gets to be a lot because it's uh, what I'll call home base, professorslots.com, professorslots.com um, is, is my home base, and that's where you can find everything. Uh, and I have an email list where I'll keep you informed of things that I publish, content that I publish. So uh, I'm going to take a moment and see if I can find um, my live details. Uh, there should be something here on one of my web pages about, let's see here, I want to go to, um, should be an option here for, it's amazing, I'm, I'm going through all this stuff and I'm, I'm seeing, all these things. Uh, lots of features that seem to only be active when I'm actually live, uh, which makes it um, kind of interesting to try and, 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 and do all this. So let's see. I have, I have options here. Uh, I need to get used to this software. Um, uh, just one second while I see if there's a way for me to get to um, YouTube and confirm that what I'm seeing uh, is correct. So um, I will attempt to go to that and I will attempt to go to that and I will attempt to go to um, that and ah do uh, Bill asks uh, do I also play Indian casinos yeah uh, stream health uh, that's excellent <laughs> uh, recently um, they in the farmland that I live in uh, they upgraded. Um, my what my broadband for my internet, and I can't believe my stream is healthy. That's awesome. Uh, right. So, um, if you're online, uh, there is. Um, so, Bill, um, do I play Indian casinos? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, my family is from Michigan, uh, and I. Uh, <laughs> they want me to take them to casinos, uh, and they mostly tribal casinos, except in Detroit. Uh, they want me to take them to, to tribal casinos and show them how to win. So, uh, talk about my 2020 goals. Uh, my family, uh, sister, aunt, um, have goals, uh, where I am to show them how to win. Now, uh, somehow, a year ago, uh, it wasn't, um, as prominent, but having podcast website that's doing better uh and uh youtube channel um they're like so you really do know um because i have taken them to uh soaring eagle uh in mount pleasant uh michigan and uh shown them how to win but that was a couple of years ago and and um now it's now now we're serious about it uh i want to make sure um right uh, um, so I have family. Oh, the other one is, uh, that I actually wrote a review on was a Seminole Brighton casino. It's about two hours South of Orlando. And if you go to, um, uh, my website, you can, you can, uh, uh, take a look there. Now, one thing I want to try to do here, um, if it is at all possible is to maybe hold up and there's a delay in, uh, my video. So I have to hold this here for a moment, uh, to see it come up on my screen because there's about a 20 second lag. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to assume success. Um, I have some friends, uh, fam family friends, Dave and Lois, um, who is, uh, who are uh, trying to use YouTube for the first time. So I just showed my YouTube page. Uh, and if you go to the third one on the list, right there, if, if, I have some friends, uh, family, family friends. 
and I started it. And if you go there at the very bottom, uh, they were asking, how do I chat? I saw you were live, but I couldn't ask questions. I couldn't find the chat. Might have been the first time on YouTube. So right there at the bottom, after you click your 2020 slots gambling goals, live Q&A, there is a place for you to type in. And so uh, feel free to do that, Dave and Lois, and I hope to hear from you. Uh, when Greek Town changed hands, it appeared odds of winning were reduced. Any thoughts? I have lots of thoughts about that. Um, uh, it's another one of my advantage plays. Um, or at least I certainly saw the effect, but I, you know, execution is as difficult. Um, if you go to my website, um, uh, just to answer your question a little more dramatically, I suppose, um, I'm going to pull up my website and um, let's see here. Come on. Right. This is what my website looks like on mobile. Maybe next time I'll use my iPad. If you go all the way to the bottom of that, screen, you'll see my latest articles, but you'll also see this as featured on ABC Channel 27. That was a news article where they interviewed me in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, about, was it three months ago, four months ago? Uh, and we talked about casinos there, and I shared my thoughts on what's going on. They It was an investigative report uh, for the evening news in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, which has um, Penn National, uh, one casino, not many casinos, one casino. And they talked about how it opened um, a number of years ago and it was 92, 93% payout return because Pennsylvania, it's in Pennsylvania and Pennsylvania um, shows the, the, uh, the return statistics. So you know what the actuals were to use the language, the financial language. Um, and it was 92%. And then, uh, a year or two after it opened, it dropped to uh, under 90%. And it hasn't been above since, and I think it's been 9 or 12 years. Uh, so, yeah, Greek Town, when casinos are bought, two things happen. And we only noticed one of them. After it changed hands, after it changes hands, uh, uh, the odds go down. Why? Because it's a new owner, and the new owner just spent a lot of money. It's a business practice, right? But what's interesting is if you can figure out they're going to sell, and this is all proprietary, they're not sharing, but maybe you can figure out a way with your contacts in the, in the casino, if you can get some indication like, you know, it's easy to see a lot of fixing up and a lot of, um, uh, you know, executives leaving or, you know, when things are going to change, there's in a business, there's signs for that. If you can look for that, um, you can know in advance. Uh, they don't, you don't have to find out something only the executives know, only the negotiating team knows. But if you can find out about it, uh, then you could take advantage because, the casino is preparing to be sold. And when a casino is preparing to be sold, it is got better odds. Maybe you'll just see the better odds, but that's the thing you need to watch out because the date of sale might be reported in a financial report somewhere, but it isn't obvious news usually isn't obvious news. But if you happen to be getting, because I, this happened to me, if you get a W2G and you look at the title, of the casino and it's a different name. Well, the first people they tell when this happens is the IRS. So the W2G is updated and you will be the first to know once you look at your W2G. So that's how you know it's been sold, in which case be very careful. Um, I talk about assessing casinos on my main page. Uh, and one of the things I say, it has to be reassessed if there's a new owner. It has to be uh, because uh, that, new owner has different business practices. I think that's a very succinct way of saying that. Um, now, casino, tribal casinos, to sort of combine um, uh, your question uh, with Bill's question earlier about tribal casinos, tribal casinos don't sell their casino, right? I mean, it's owned by the tribe. Uh, now, one of the other things that I watch for that I talk about various places is what if a new casino opens? Now, that's a great opportunity because um, they want 
you know, the one in uh, Cincinnati that I learned this at, um, th- there's two in Cincinnati, Belterra Park, which is a racetrack, but had a very old building with slots in it. So it was a racino, technically, um, racetrack with slot machines, but no table games. And then there was the downtown area that never had a casino before. And Belterra Park was closed for renovations, right? And that meant there was no casino. So Horseshoe, at the time, owned by Caesars Entertainment, came into Cincinnati and had to establish themselves. You know, the nearest one was Southern Indiana, a couple hours away. Um, not convenient at all. There was racetracks further north. Um, uh, but not even that, because Ohio was just sort of opening up to the possibility of having casinos and not racetracks. So they, you know, Ohio put slot machines in to racetracks and had just a few casinos as well, uh, all at the same time. So really, there was no gaming industry. People had to be taught, hey, come to the casino. It's fun. Maybe you'll like to play some slots. What are slots? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let me tell you what slots are. You know, that sort of thing. And It can't be a bad experience. Otherwise, they don't come back for a second trip. So there is a besides building the building, besides all the uh, all the advertising, there are there is also a budget to allow people to win. Uh, This partly gets some details of the gaming um, regulations. Sometimes the gaming regulations will say uh, be really restrictive and not allow it. But most don't. And I talk about that in my state by state articles. But in Ohio, they were allowed to go over 100 percent on their payout returns if they cared to. It's crazy to do it unless they have a good business reason. And they did. They wanted people to come to the casino and win. I mean, they weren't just like sending everybody home with money. They had a budget. And they allowed people to do that under the hope, I think, that most people would just go right back in and spend it again. I walked away with money uh, that first year. It was just piles of money. This is why I know what, you know, I can put $20,000 in my two pockets and carry a mobile phone at the same time in, in, in my jeans without anything sticking out. You know, it's just money in every pocket. It was just hard work to walk around with those kinds of bulges and, and my, you know, you know, warm day and I'm wearing a jacket. What's that all about? <laughs> because I just had to have a place to put all the money. I just like cash. I should get checks, but I, I like cash. Um, in any case, uh, to, to long story short, too late. Uh, um, uh, they, they needed to make that money back. Once they established themselves in the community, they needed to make the, to, had to, had to get that money back, which was the plan all along. So the second year, just so it wasn't too dramatic, you could still win, but you kind of had to work at it. Not a lot, but a little. And then the third year, whew, they turn the screws. Okay, um, you you can see this in the gaming regulation, uh, the, the the return statistics for that year. They just you know turn that dial down until they were pulling the money back in. Those people that I was with, this turned me into an advantage player because the the people I was playing with who were winning all the time at this new casino, they thought it was luck. They thought they were lucky. And they weren't. They, I mean, maybe some of the jackpots were just plain luck, but the casino had set the odds so that they would, gen- in general, win. Uh, under the assumption that they would then put the money back in and, and lose it, but still win a little bit more. And and so it wasn't as bad for the casino as you might think, because people responded by just going back in. And that's what they wanted. Because when they turned the odds down, everybody was like, well, my luck can't change. If I just keep playing, I'll be fine. I'll, it'll come back. I'll be lucky again. It's me. I mean, so many slot attendants, even you win a jackpot. They're, they're like, I'll be back later. You know, you're, um, you know, you're lucky. And it's just like, no, I'm not. You know, what do you, uh, and if you don't win, it's because you weren't lucky. And it's just like, that's not how I think about it. Um, so. So, uh, they turned the screws and I, I went in, I, I stopped at that point, write the book and, and, um, uh, you know, I saw the trend and I sort of stepped away and evaluated and I'm so glad that I did. I went back a year later and I saw Marty, uh, who owns a small pallet company and, uh, and I'm like, Hey Marty, where is everybody? Where are all the other high limit slots player, slots players? Oh, Marty says they all went into bankruptcy. So, 
Uh, the casino got its money back, I would assume. Uh, then it was sold to the same people who um, own the Greek town um, uh, casinos in Michigan, uh, um, uh, Jack. Now it's a Jack Cincinnati, and they bought Jack Cleveland, uh, Horseshoe Cleveland, uh, and uh, uh, now it's all owned by them, which was again sold um, April of this year, 2019, uh, to, was it MGM? Who was it sold to? Anybody, anybody know who's anybody on from Ohio, uh, who can remember who they sold it to? The signs aren't up yet, but there's been some news reports. The first thing they had to do was negotiate. The second thing they had to do was get approval from the gaming regulation, which took months. And they made the decision in August, applied for the change in August. Um, or is it conditional ownership or, or something? When did they take ownership? I, would, I, I haven't been going there to get W2Gs, so that's the official information. Um, but they certainly have to, haven't put the signs up yet. Uh, and uh, that the, I think they got approval from the Gaming Commission. I think it was August, towards the end of August. So um, I should swing by there. I was there what was it, like a month ago? And the signs hadn't gone up. I should make sure I just sort of swing by and see if the signs are up. Okay. Um, let's see. How are we doing? Half half the time's up. Uh, and uh, do you have any more questions? Uh, you want to share maybe uh, what your 2020 slots gambling goals might be? Uh, uh, on holidays, uh, if you go to my website – um, and look under uh, strategies, you'll find one that uh, there's like seven, eight articles. Uh, and one of them is about holidays. Uh, if And there's another one that's similar uh, because there's only so many holidays. I call it um, a special events. So a holiday is a special event, but there's a few more things you can do on special events. Special events would be like a month long promotion to give a, give away a car on November 30th. Uh, and would that be a good day to go? And, you know, particularly if it falls on, um, you know, a Saturday, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, you might want to go for trying to win the car. I did. Um, <laughs> Mercedes Benz E350. I took the cash. Um, but, uh, but I wouldn't gamble. Uh, not with slots. Uh, the casino knows there's a big crowd. They've planned to have a big crowd and, and, um, uh, hang on, Bill. Uh, they, they know they have a big crowd. They want a big crowd and they have this problem where they can't adjust the, the odds of winning. Um, when the casino's busy because they have to do it when the machine's not being played. And that's, you know, back to back players. Anybody gets up, somebody sits down immediately and there's no time to change the odds. It does take a moment. Um, so they kind of get stuck uh, with whatever odds they decided upon earlier in the day. And just to be safe, they make the odds a little bit lower. Because imagine you get a big crowd and you set them too high. It's going to take a week of people losing in order for the casino to meet their gaming regulation requirements. Yeesh. But if it's too low, uh, that's easily fixable. I mean, excuse me. Yeah, if it's too low, if the odds of winning on all the slot machines is too low, then, yeah, I understand, Bo. Uh, uh If the odds of winning are too low, then all they have to do is give back a jackpot at, say, 4 o'clock the next morning. Mine happened at 4.30, $27,000. Never had a bigger jackpot. The car was worth more, but that's a cash out. That's a cash option. But actual jackpots, $27,000, 4.30 in the morning. And three minutes before that, somebody in the other, uh, uh, I do know that it was over 10,000 uh, and uh, probably way over. Well, I, I just know it was over 10,000 because they had a, um, uh, a floor manager rather than two slot attendants there. But I was sucked into my own $27,000 uh, hand pay. Uh, and um, I'd never won anything over $5,000 before. This was when I was just getting started. And I was, you know, I'm looking at these patterns and I'm like, oh my goodness. So let's, um, uh, Boiser City, uh, pardon me, Louisiana, right? Uh, um, I want to say uh, Louisiana. If you go to, if it is Louisiana and I can, very quickly check that. 
Bonnie is in your city. Yes, I got it right. I'm really getting to know all the states. Um, if you go to professorslats.com slash LA, uh, which I will do right now, we can see what there is to see. I don't have them all memorized. Um, but if you go to professorslots.com slash LA, and this is just the time for Louisiana, uh, if you do that, and I'll wait for it to come up. Let's bring it over here so I can look at you while I do this. Um, Louisiana slot machine casino gambling in 2018. I put out this article, wrote it in November 2018. Um, so it's about one year ago, and it isn't too long before. Oh, yeah, I'm doing Guam and Hawaii now. So Louisiana's coming up in another month or so. Um, uh, let's see. We have... Dun, 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 dun. 15 riverboat casinos, one land-based casinos, uh, casino, four paramutual casinos, four tribal casinos. Okay. Um, let's see what we're talking about with, uh, you said horseshoe, right? Yeah. And Boise, uh, let's see. Largest is Harris, New Orleans. Second largest is, uh, Paragon Casino in Marksville. Uh, Boise, Boise, Boise City. Uh, Diamond Jacks Casino. Uh, that's not a horseshoe. Uh, um, t -t 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 ah, Horseshoe Casino Hotel, Boise City, Revo Casino, uh, located 216 miles west of Jackson, Miss, uh, Miss, Mississippi. Right. So if I go down to further to payout returns in Louisiana, um, yeah, you asked about Boise City, Horseshoe in Boise City. That is a riverboat. So under the Louisiana Gaming Control Board, uh, there are revenue reports, and they're broken up into video poker, land-based casinos, riverboat casinos, and paramutual sites. So we're looking for riverboat casino. I will go. I will click on my link there at, at professorslats.com slash LA. And again, I need to get all this up for you. Um, and look at revenue reports for riverboat casinos. 2004 to present. Uh, the most recent one is September 2019. I click on that and I get a PDF. There is riverboat revenue and market comparison. Let's try riverboat revenue. Uh, Boomtown, Horseshoe, 30. Okay. In um, September, there were 30 gambling days. Uh, 107,762 people were admitted. 12 million in um, gaming uh, fees, 2.6 million. Uh, last month was 17, Ooh, down 5 million. Um, and riverboat total. I, sh I should go back to my webpage. Um, overall monthly payout returns of the four PM rituals. Unfortunately, there were the other three revenue reports above do not offer net slot proceeds. Therefore, no payout returns are available for video poker, land-based casinos, and riverboat casinos. Uh, that's your answer. That's your answer. Uh, sorry to take so long to, to uh, with that. There are no payout return percentages available for Horseshoe in Boise City, Louisiana, because that's not the game, the state gaming regulation. Uh, that's not the state gaming regulations. A lot of casinos, a lot of states don't offer payout return percentages, either, you know, a theoretical uh, or actually, let me double check that. Um, I was talking about return statistics. Oh, you do have a theoretical payout return legal limit um, of a minimum of 80% and a maximum of 99.9%. Uh, one of the things I'm doing, one of the things I'll do when I rewrite this, uh, oh, video pokers, not in casinos, have a legal limit of 80% and a maximum of 94%. Uh, so play slot machines because it has higher percent. Um, but one of the things that's become important that I've understood, so when I rewrite this, review it again in a month or so, um, uh, Louisiana uh, may have... See, I don't like a maximum theoretical. A maximum theoretical could mean that uh, the casino is not allowed to make it a winning machine. But there's a subtlety 
that I need to research on each of these states that has a maximum theoretical, which is it's hardly even matters if it has a maximum theoretical, if, if it, if it hardly even matters if there's a maximum theoretical, if it's over the lifetime of the machine, right? They have machines that last a year. Some last a week. Don't play the ones that last a week. The ones that last a year, multiple years, a decade. Those are the ones where it doesn't really matter because they're, it's a long, long lifetime. But if it's set to be, you know, a theoretical maximum payout return is set, which is per wager, then the casino is bound by that with their business practices. Some of the stuff I was talking about with Horseshoe Cincinnati, they were, they could do that because they were allowed to do that. There was no gaming regulation saying they couldn't do that. And it's what I watch for. I don't really know a way around winning on a, on a slot machine in a state that has a maximum theoretical per wager. But most of them don't. There's only a few states that do, and I'm trying to get through my, it takes me a year to get through all the states and, and identify which ones, which states are states I would never play slots in. Because it, it would just be luck. There would be no game, there would be no advantage play. So, you know, I don't play, I won't gamble in that state. And then I have to think what would I suggest to people who do live in that state and that's where they gamble. Okay. Um, we have 20 minutes left. Uh, any other questions you want to ask? Um, one of the things that, uh, is interesting is I, 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 I left this last week's Saturday's, um, uh, uh, video up for the live Q and a, and it got hundreds of views, uh, not so much people live, uh, but uh, people were asking about, uh, uh, you know, afterwards it got a lot. Um, what do I think? Angry Grandpa Fan 2. Um, who's Fan 1? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, these are interesting names. Uh, so what do you think of Harris Cherokee? Uh, please join my Facebook group for North Carolina and you'll find out what, gee, how many people do we have on there now? We've got, I think Oklahoma has more. Um, let's see here. Dun, dun, dun. If I go to North Carolina, dun, 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 North Carolina, uh, Slots Community, it is a shortcut, professorslots.com slash FBNC. That's FB for Facebook, NC for North Carolina. And we've got 21 members there. We'll be happy to share all your opinions. It's a very active group. You might even see them at Harris Cherokee. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, you can chat with them about it. Um, there's been a lot of discussion of late. Um, my goodness, what was it? Uh, all these, um, Steve, uh, I was talking about him before. Uh, Harris, uh, he's wearing my Professor Slot shirts. That's nice of him. Uh, uh, Harris, let me bring this over here so I can talk about it. Uh, right. So November 24th, that was six days ago. Uh, Harris Cherokee, 1056 PM Thursday night, first day of two night trip, was able to hold on to most of this. He's talking about a one, uh, let's see, jackpot of, Let's zoom in here. I'm trying to see. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, uh, so, uh, he has several pictures up of his, oh, uh, winner of $1,230. Um, uh, does it say what slot machine it was? Lightning Cash. Um, and he did this, he says, um, I don't encourage people to send, uh, have the time. 10.56 p.m. Thursday night. That would have been last week. And he got a hand pay. And I, th I believe that was his first one. And that's uh, that that sort of sums up his goal for next year. Um, then I have uh, Richard. Richard asked, if you listen to or, or were here for the live Q&A last week, um, he had a, a, a question about sweepstakes games and i had not heard that term before but when i looked it up i realized yeah i know all about it uh he was asking about illegal gambling machines uh, uh little parlor 
somebody sets up uh, and uh, they get raided by the police. But in the meantime, they make a bunch of money. So uh, I, I those are unregulated and I have. You know, there's no business practices that I could take advantage of. We, we, there's every state has not every state, a lot of states, a few states have illegal gaming machines. Um, and it's just, it's not safe. It's not safe. Uh, right. So Richard had a few things to say. Um, very opinionated. Oh, let's see. Um, yeah. Opinionated is great. Uh, Murphy boasts only 1,000 plus slot machines. Cherokee has 3,000 plus slot machines. Uh, he's played both high, li- high roller sections. Uh, Murphy's seems to be tighter on their slots due to less volume of players padding the machines with cash. It's his opinion. Better to visit Cherokee, North, uh, North Carolina on holidays. Um, uh, mm-hmm. I had some, uh, questions about that. Uh, let's see. Usually wins at Harris, Harris, uh, Cherokee. There's a bunch of photos of people winning. Um, and, uh, feel free to go to professorslots.com slash, um, FB, uh, NC, uh, or you can just, uh, Google, uh, just search Facebook for North Carolina slot machine casino gamblers. I understand that there are plenty of people out there who, you're welcome, Bill. Uh, there are plenty of people over there out there that would be, you know, not interested in going to Facebook, and I can certainly appreciate that. But it seemed like an easy way to set up a community. Um, I think YouTube is actually a better choice. So if you want to comment below, um, I, I also wanted to mention the people that are commenting now, no one's ever going to see that except me and, and you now. Uh, it is not part of the video. Uh, uh, and all of the live chat disappears so you'll, you, no one will ever see it except the people who are looking at it right now. So I guess you could say it's private. If you want to comment after we finish this video, then those comments on the video on YouTube, uh, those will be forever. Uh, so, uh, just wanted to mention that. Um, let's see. Angry Gamp. <laughs> I just love that name. Angry Grandpa Fan 2. I won over a thousand dollars on heat up, uh, heat em up power wheels. Um, and they need to open the Catawab Casino near Char- uh, Charlotte. Uh, hmm. That's interesting. Let me uh, go check that one. So I have... Uh, Let's take a look at North Carolina's article. Uh we just did the Louisiana one. So this one would be professorslots.com slash North Carolina or rather NC would be easiest, less typing. So if I go there, um, and that won't be too long after the next one won't be too long after this one. I did, uh, March North Carolina was March 1st. So it won't be until like April of 2020 before I get back to North Carolina again. Um, just if I stay on schedule, which I usually do with these. Um, list of casinos. <coughs> Voice is getting a little dry. <laughs> so payouts. Um, you know, I'll make a note of that. I'll make a note of, uh, so this is another casino. It, well, you said, uh, Catawaba casino near Charlotte. Hmm. Interesting. Um, is this also the Eastern band of Cherokee Indians? Because it doesn't sound like it. Uh, let me see if I can maybe grab that. Yeah. So I will make a note, uh, in my next report on that to double check, um, for a new casino there. So let me make a quick note, uh, for Carolina. Where are you at? North, 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 North Carolina. Quick note. Oh, it's a, it's in Kings Mountain. You know, there, absolutely. Professorslots.com slash F date and they can vote, uh, and they can contact the representative. Um, uh, I think it is Bill, you generally go on, Sunday to Boise City, Sunday and Monday. Uh, 
That sounds like a fine thing. Um, and how do you do there? Uh, you know, not other days. If, well, yeah, places where you have, don't have any whatsoever. And you've got a few, ah, got a person who wants to join. Many times it's a matter of, can, says, get out of Boiser and Shreveport and some other part of the state far away. Oh my goodness. They just, they, the choices, except Texas are seeing who travel to, it's, it's, a, it's, it's not a day trip any, how, any longer. And that's not very convenient. The people I've been talking to are, you know, retired 10 years ago, they say. So, um, you look at your choices, honey, go once a year. I mean, it changes. No, it depends if you have the money to burn a pay, you know, put it all back in. I'll see. I shouldn't, uh, was contacting me this morning saying, why is it that I, uh, whenever I win something at the casino, the next time I go, I lose, I lose it all. Um, my mom to take your winnings home. And it was a long or, uh, Okay. Double check is on heat em up power wheels uh, game. Every the same odds is into the machine next to them. And it was mine could not be seen from a distance. They were on the end of the row and I was kind of blocked on the next one in. Seems obvious to me that, that the casino set up the one on the end of the row that had a, a view down the long hallway, uh, to be visible. And so why wouldn't they, you know, silent promotion? Not, not going to tell you about it, but encouraging people to win. So they go sit down further into the row and lose their money. Business practice, right? Uh, try to be observant. That's my approach here. Uh, let's see. Maybe double check other comments. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, we talked about green, uh, uh, Greek, t- Greek town, uh, pure, changing hands and what it means for a casino to change hands both before it happens, which is really hard to find out about and what happens after. It's one of the first things we talked about. Uh, let's see. Okay. So, um, uh, just to wrap this up, I wanted, I, I hope everybody had a nice Thanksgiving here in the U S uh, um, I guess that was two days ago. And I hope that you survived Friday, Black Friday at the malls. I stayed away. Um, uh, shopping's done, has been done since September. Um, hopefully family's not listening. And, uh, um, you know, I hope that the, uh, you know, tomorrow's December and I hope that the weather isn't too bad. I know people are traveling, uh, and the weather is bad across um, the West. So I hope that's okay for you guys. And other than that, you know, have a great December. Um, I'll be here again, 2 PM Saturday, uh, next weekend. And if you have a request on a particular topic, I'm, I'm, it's working just to answer your questions or wide ranging comment, uh, uh, questions. And, um, uh, will Myrtle Beach uh, ever get casinos? There has to be check the uh, check the state uh, check the uh, okay uh, North Carolina is tribal casinos. Tribal casinos are on reservations. Are there any reservation land on Myrtle Beach? Yeah, I see, I see your question, angry grandpa fan too. Will Myrtle Beach, South, ah, South Carolina. Sorry. Uh, no. Uh, short answer. South Carolina is death on, on casinos. Uh, they, there's a, I think there's a boat, um, that goes out international, international waters. Uh, and it's not actually very far from Myrtle Beach. Um, check professorslots.com slash SC. Um, uh, for that. Um, and you can see what size it is. And I put some links in there, but, uh, not in casino, um, just in international waters. I think it's, it's a, it's a daily casino, uh, boat. Um, and that's what you get, but land-based, um, is, was your question. And, uh, no, uh, they, 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 the social mores in that state, um, seem to indicate that they don't want it. Uh, um, and, uh, 
my I think one of my reviews said that South Carolina was the third most restrictive uh, state on gambling uh, after um, Utah and Hawaii. Only Utah and Hawaii have nothing whatsoever. I think South Carolina might have bingo. Um, uh, and Utah has it for religious reasons. Hawaii has it for financial reasons. <laughs> they did a study. So you pick a spot of land and you, uh, in Hawaii and they did an economic analysis. What if you were to put, uh, what if you were to put a casino on that, uh, on that property? How much money would the state make in income tax, income taxes, uh, on gaming revenue? And then they said, okay, now let's put a, uh, resort, you know, no casino, but, uh, you know, tourism. Uh, resort there. How much would we make? And the casino was like a hundred million. No the casino was like 2 million. No, what was the number? It was like a hundred times more for the tourism spot than it was for the casino. And the state's like, yeah, we're totally prohibiting gambling here. <laughs> we'll, we'll make more income tax revenue gaming uh, off of gaming uh, or off, off of tourism than, than we ever will on gaming. Easy decision. Uh, but South Carolina, I never really dug into why they don't want it other than they don't want it. Um, habits are hard to change. Okay, so I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, looks like the last few questions. Rena Pastures, are the Vegas casinos struggling? They're always struggling. Um, uh, but, you know, as long as it's nothing abrupt, uh, they try to see that's the thing about Nevada. And I wrote an article, another article about this. Um, uh, Nevada gaming leads the way. Um, you're welcome, Bill. Uh, uh, are the Vegas casinos struggling? Um, yeah, sure. All businesses are. I don't worry about it. I mean, they try things like parking, you know, uh, fees, resort fees. Uh, you know, it's only this much money for a room. Um, but you have these fees, you know, kind of reminds me of college. You know, there was how much was it per, for, for tuition per credit? Oh, I can do that. What are these lab fees and, <laughs> you know, the cost of books and all these other stuff on my bill? Oh my goodness. So, uh, they, they, um, uh, then they pull back on that when, when people are like, well, I guess I won't go, you know, it's a business and you might be able to have an opportunity if you carefully watch it. Lots of podcasts out there that are just about Las Vegas and you can kind of monitor this stuff. I, uh, I really like on Twitter, uh, Vital Vegas. He's posting every, you know, several times a day on various stuff and he, he, he's an insider. He, he, keeps track of what's opening, what's closing. And that's a real good person to follow. So, and I have a Las Vegas, um, uh, if you're visiting Las Vegas, what to do as far as slots and uh, article uh, to take a look at. Um, okay. So it looks like we hit our mark. Uh, I could go a little bit longer, but it looks like um, all the questions have kind of been answered and I only wanted to go for an hour. Uh, again, I wish everybody, uh, a great Cyber Monday on Monday, right? Uh, hope everybody had a nice Thanksgiving and a, a not too dangerous Black Friday. And, uh, we'll talk, we'll talk in a week, uh, two o'clock on Saturday, uh, same time, uh, same place, same time. Okay. Hey, everybody have fun, be safe, make good choices. Remember to visit professorslots.com slash subscribe to get my free report revealing the top seven online resources for improving your gambling performance, including the one I've used as a top tier slot machine casino gambler. Up next is the second segment of the show on slot machine casino gambling. Here I provide a brief overview of the current state of gambling in a U.S. state, territory, or the federal district, emphasizing by far anything of interest to slot machine casino gamblers. Up next is Arkansas Slot Machine Casino Gambling in 2019. Here goes. Arkansas Slot Machine Casino Gambling consists of two casinos with Class 2 skill-based slot machines. These casinos also offer paramutual wagering of dog or horse races. These competition-style slot machines have a legal minimum payout return limit. The minimum legal gambling age in Arkansas depends upon the gambling activity. For land-based casinos and poker rooms, it's 21. For bingo, the lottery, and paramutual wagering, it's 18. State law allows skill-based gaming machines, but only if approved locally by their municipalities. 
The state legislation, which approved competition-style gaming machines via Act 1511, is known as the Local Option Horse Racing and Greyhound Racing Electronic Games of Skill Act of 2005. Further, Arizona's governor legalized the state's tribes through negotiated tribal state compacts to offer slot machines on their reservations in 1993. All tribal casinos in Arizona. Further, Arkansas's governor legalized the state's tribes through negotiated tribal state compacts to offer slot machines on their reservations in 1993. All tribal casinos in Arkansas offer competition-style slot machines, video poker, and video kino. Up next is a usually short statement about slot machine private ownership, which I've included in case you live in this U.S. state and are considering owning a slot machine. Here it is. In Arkansas, all slot machines are legal to own privately. The Arkansas State Gaming Commission is the Electronic Games of Skill section within the Arkansas Department of Finance and Administration, DFA. The section is responsible for gaming regulations and compliance of all skill-based games in Arkansas. In this section, I discussed Arkansas gambling establishments. There are two casinos with competition-style gaming machines and paramutual racing in Arkansas. The largest casino in Arkansas is Southland Park Gaming and Racing in West Memphis, with over 2,000 gaming machines and over 40 table games. The second largest casino, and the only other casino in Arkansas, is Oakland Racing Casino Resort in Hot Springs. A third casino, expected to be the largest in the state, is pending. Owned and operated by the Cherokee Nation of Oklahoma, the River Valley Casino Resort will be in Pope County in northwest Arkansas. Some legal obstacles remain before construction can begin. Again, the two casinos in Arkansas are Oaklawn Racing Casino Resort, located in Hot Springs, 57 miles southwest of Little Rock, and Southland Park Gaming and Racing, located in West Memphis, 132 miles east and north of Little Rock on the eastern state border near the Mississippi River. Both of Arkansas's paramutual wagering facilities with skill-based slot machines have a rich history going back over 100 years. There is one pending tribal casino in Arkansas the River Valley Casino Resort to be located in Russellville, 78 miles northwest of Little Rock. As an alternative to enjoying Arkansas slot machine casino gambling, consider exploring casino options in a nearby state. Bordering Arkansas is to the north, Missouri, to the east, Mississippi and Tennessee, to the south, Louisiana, to the southwest, Texas, and to the west, Oklahoma. To visit any of my articles in these U.S. states, simply visit ProfessorSlots.com followed by its two-letter postal designation. For example, my Missouri Slots article is available at ProfessorSlots.com slash MO. Are you interested in sharing and learning with other Slots enthusiasts in Arkansas? If so, join our new Arkansas Slots community on Facebook at ProfessorSlots.com slash FBAR. All you will need is a Facebook profile to join this closed Facebook group freely. There, you'll be able to privately share your slots experiences as well as chat with players about slots gambling in or near Arkansas. Again, use this convenient link I've created to go directly to our group on Facebook, professorslots.com slash FBAR. Join us. The state legislature has required all electronic games of skill must have a minimum payout return of 83% during the expected lifetime of the game. There is no maximum payout return limit. The Electronic Games of Skill Miscellaneous Tax section of the DFA provides the gaming machine revenues for both racinos. These amounts, subject to state taxes, do not include the value returned to casino patrons. Otherwise, only the American Casino Guide, ACG, Arkansas Entry, provides public information on payout return statistics for Arkansas casinos. From mid-2017 through mid-2018, the ACG reports payout return statistics of 93.04% for Oaklawn Park and 92.86% for Southland Park. Arkansas Slot Machine Casino Gambling consists of two paramutual wagering facilities with skill-based slot machines. The competition-style slot machines must have some element of skill included with the device. This decision-making feature is not necessarily the primary game theme, but often a non-used feature. Theoretical payout returns for slot machines in Arkansas are a minimum of 83% over the expected lifetime of the game. The ACG publicly reports return statistics for both casinos to have an annual average relatively close to 93%. In the last year, approvals have progressed for a tribal casino in Polk County, as discussed in last year's review. The Arkansas Times has updated reports on its pending status. Previously, only electronic versions of popular table games were available at Arkansas casinos. On April 1st, 2019, live tables arrived. 
the casinos now offer live versions of craps, blackjack, and other table games. Remember to visit ProfessorSlots.com slash subscribe to get my free report revealing the top seven online resources for improving your gambling performance, including the one I've used as a top-tier slot machine casino gambler. Part one of the next episode of the Professor Slots podcast is not yet determined. I'm looking to review a book someone has suggested on slots. We'll see if that review is completed in time to be part of the next podcast now that I'm on a regular schedule. To suggest a topic or ask a question which might end up as a blog article or as a podcast episode, email it to john at professorslots.com, where John is spelled J-O-N, or by calling 702-90-SLOTS to leave a voicemail. Part two of the next episode of the Professor Slots podcast is another brief overview of the current state of gambling in a U.S. state, territory, or the federal district. Next time, I'll be talking to you about the great U.S. state of California. That's the end of another great episode of the Professor Slots podcast. Thanks so much for listening. Show notes for this episode are now available within most podcast apps, but are also available on my website at professorslots.com slash episode 67. I plan to have the next episode come out very soon for you, where I'll have more amazing content for the show. Until the next episode, have fun, be safe, and make good choices. Bye. <laughs>